What it do, homies? It's your boy Dave, and I'm back today. We are here about to start our journey on Combs uh, McGinnis, right? Let's make sure I'm pronouncing his name right. Col Colm McGinnis. Yes. Uh, we're going to start our journey here because what I heard um, my last reaction um, to him, and I believe it was the... Um, Crap, I'm forgetting things and I don't know why. It's been a long day at work. Uh, the Misty Mountains, right? Yes, I believe so. Anyways, absolutely love the guy's voice. Very, very interesting tone. And I'm told by two guys that he has a very, very interesting range as well. Now, interesting enough, we're about to check out this If I Had a Heart. And it's a Norse version. Now, I have seen all the Vikings. Um, it's just in time to check this out because they released a season two, I believe. Don't know necessarily what it's about, but I'm excited to start it. Um this instrument right here is pretty interesting. I thought it was, I saw somebody perform on this instrument. I forgot what her name was, but is this what you would call like a, what do you call it? A, a tang, tangle harpus. I think that's what it's called. Very interesting how much depth and stuff that you can get out of just these three strings. And I imagine that it might, might be a little bit difficult to play. I'm not even sure if you finger anything, right? Any you know, of the strings or whatnot, but it's very interesting. Anyways, let's go ahead and shut up and turn it up. Oh, we got a cello too. goodness already with the dragon voice already you see how he's looking up to the heavens because he has to pull down the dragon spears to help him sing this song you know i played violin and viola way way back then um elementary school so i guess it don't really count but one thing i do know is that when you are playing it when you um the velocity that you go at the string is how you create what I what you would call like in a, in, in a harsher, more attack. Right. So zing, zing, and that's what we kind of see them playing like that. Uh, it's very interesting because we you know, this type of song kind of has that groody, like really broody type of mate, that type of nature. And with him kind of going like that really fast and slowing, it's almost kind of giving you like that sense of things getting getting chopped up and stuff like like you're attacking everything. Now, what's really interesting about this song is, of course, the way that they mix the way that is mixed um a lot of the elements of this song tend to favor towards the more low end type of things which can get really really messy if you're not careful so they found that the original composer has found an excellent way of just mixing all this darkness into this song but at the same time making sure that the harmonics are, are, are not lost now the original song is i believe sung by a female so we already bought we already on some dragon demon time with him starting off like this so okay let's go You know, I'm raising a two year old, two year old uh, boy. And, you know, I've been sitting here thinking, you know, as a parent, want to make sure he grows into a man everybody can respect and everything. I just need him to show him this song. <laughs> he might even grow a few hairs.
with these special effects. You know, and then I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, I, I don't think I've heard the full song of this if I had a heart outside of kind of just, you know, covers that I've done reactions to. And and of course, the theme song that's played. Um, God, is, but but what, what's what's happening is generally sometimes I'll listen to it on a TV show or more in time. I'm skipping it if the last episode was like a cliffhanger. Um, but, you know, when I'm listening to like covers and everything, I'm pretty sure these guys studied this a lot more closely than I have. Right. You're going to put an arrangement like this. You had better have studied it uh, quite a bit. Noticing all these different type of elements and everything to make things very, very interesting, even though it's kind of chilling down there on the low end, such as kind of like these, these these sounds of breath that I'm that I'm listening, like that I'm hearing like that, ah, that type of stuff. Right. And then the layering of the vocals is just absolutely beautiful. It's, 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 it's hunting, hauntingly beautiful. feel more manly now that I've listened to this. That synth sound, that's nice. Oh yeah, keep it going. Bro, look at this profile pic. <laughs> you know, and I think I've stumbled upon another excellent excellent musician because i'm told like it said it up here and i, I went and read his uh, bio and everything on his channel uh and he's a composer right so i absolutely love listening to um you know covers and everything by composers because he does it for say film tv video games and pretty much all things media and the type of things that composers go through is that they have to adapt to a whole lot of styles because you never know what you're going to compose to uh, but one of the most important things that you better know is of course you know music theory i feel like with a good grasp of music theory you can really take these covers different types of places uh once you kind of understand what you need to do in order to achieve said results or even give something a little bit more different like a little bit more flavor and whatnot so i bet you if i go and compose and compare this to like the original song that i heard that we can already kind of hear some of those differences um i don't believe the original song was sung in old norse or if it was the if i had a heart probably sound like in english um and i'm pretty sure that old norse is not cone's natural language so the fact that he's even took the time to study it see it's, it is i feel like it's one i don't know i feel like it's one thing to you know know how to say a certain phrase or something like in another language uh and a whole nother thing to sing it especially when it comes to pronunciation now i don't know how many people still speak old norse i'm pretty sure it's not a dead language i think i'm pretty sure there's people in the world that speaks old norse but i would be very interested to know how his um enunciation was right was it spot on it sounded spot on to me but what do i know right <laughs> all right y'all that's the end of this video if you enjoyed the content leave a like and subscribe 
Dave's out.